Hello and welcome to our discussion on cash flow statement. In this session we will try to understand how the business decisions affect the financial statements and uh, how the business decisions affect particular one particular financial statement that is the cash flow statement. So cash flow statement shows the cash in hand. So assuming that it's a new business, not an existing business, on other words, assuming that there is no opening cash in hand, so cash in hand is a receipts for the period minus the payments for the period. But the receipts and the payments for the period depends on the business decisions, financing decision, investment decisions, and operating decisions, and operating decisions. So therefore, cash in hand can either you can find as a receipts minus payment, all the receipts and payment showing together, or you can classify the receipts and payment on the basis of FD, ID, and OD. So assuming no, op no opening cash in hand, the cash in hand is equal to the cash from financing, cash from investment, and cash from operating decisions. So we'll take an example to understand how to find cash in hand by deduct receipts and how to find cash in hand by using the CFF, CFI and CFO framework. So let us take this set of transactions. There's a financial transactions given here and uh, with this financial transactions we will try to prepare the financial statements and focus our attention on the cash flow statement. So these are the set of normal business decisions. So started business with cash. So we'll first take up each individual transaction, understand the effect on balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement. Balance sheet shows the sources and assets. Income statement shows incomes and expenses. Cash flow statement shows the receipts and payment. So all the business decision will find place in the financial statements as the financial items. So let us start. Started business with cash is a receipt. So therefore, it will be shown in the cash flow statement 100,000. It's a receipt, but not an income, but it is a source in the form of, by the name of capital, and capital is the money contributed by the owner. Avail 10% loan, 75,000, once again a receipt, once again a receipt, loan, sorry, loan, and the amount is 75,000. It is not an income, but a liability so we show that 75,000 on the balance sheet. Purchase stock on credit. So purchase stock on credit is an acquisition of asset so therefore we show the stock 20,000 store the stock 20,000 but you are not paid money no payment but an acquisition of the stock without the corresponding payment is a creation of creation of a liability and the liability is creditor. So liability is a creditor that is 20,000. So let me write down here. So the acquisition of the stock resulted in creation of creditor. Then purchase plant for cash. So there was a plant purchase. It's also an acquisition of an asset 50,000 but in this case you paid money for that so plant will be shown on the asset side with a corresponding payment 50,000 but if you observe here you can you can see that both are acquisition of assets one is one acquisition of an asset results in the payment another acquisition of asset resulted in creation of a liability in the form of creditor so acquisition of asset so i can we can write down here acquisition of asset 
acquisition of asset will result in will result in one of the following okay one of the following effects following effects number one either reduction of cash reduction of uh, reduction of cash or creation of uh, liability liability sometime it may also result in increase in capital though it is not there in this question so in this case it resulted in the creation of a liability in this case it resulted in the creation of a liability whereas in the second case it as a outflow of money it's an outflow of money purchase furniture for cash it is same as the previous one that is nothing much to mention that uh, mention here so purchase furniture and furniture is an asset so furniture is 10,000 purchase stock for cash so in this now you're purchasing the stock for cash that is 30,000 and the stock increases stock increases by 30 so we can see this a part of the stock is acquired through cash and part through the creditors payment to be made in a later stage of the business purchased shares some other assets purchase and you paid money for that the purchase shares for cash 50,000 and share is an asset the share is 50,000 is asset share is an asset resulted in creation of creation uh, resulted in outflow of cash purchase sold entire stock sold entire stock for the first time we are coming across an income and sales is hundred thousand sales is hundred thousand and sales is a uh, not on cash so therefore we'll not write cash here but there's a corresponding data corresponding data that is x y the hundred thousand minus zero income not received is an asset income not received is an asset and whenever there is a sale because of the matching principle there has to be cost of goods sold so the cost of goods sold is 50,000 when the cost of goods sold happens so that means entire stock is has been sold so on the balance sheet the stock will not be there anymore you purchase stock on credit and for cash an entire stock is sold so at the end of the period there is no more stock in the balance sheet paid salaries is an expense paid salaries is an expense 10,000 and you paid money for that immediately cash salary cash 10,000 paid rent but unlike salary you see the rent per month is 3,000 but paid 30,000 assuming that the accounting period is 12 months okay accounting period is 12 months we show the rent for 12 months that is 36,000 but you paid salary sorry rent rent only 30,000 so there is an outstanding there's an outstanding rent and uh, the outstanding rent is a liability outstanding rent outstanding rent to be paid later so 36,000 minus 30,000 so 6,000 is an outstanding rent rent is an expense salary is an expense but salary resulted in outflow of cash fully but the rent has only part of the money paid expense not paid is a liability income not received I'll show that once again income 
not received is an asset and expense expense not paid is a liability okay then received dividend dividend is an income dividend is an income so we receive the dividend and uh, dividend is an income so entire dividend is received during the period sold 50 percent of the shares we have 50,000 share so sale of shares we use the entire money in the show the entire money in the income statement as an income and the sale of shares is also a receipt because you have received that through uh, in the form of cash and whenever there is a sale the cost of cost of shares is an expense so the entire 50,000 uh, where is that 25 percent of it so 25 so 50 percent of uh, 50 percent so as a result on the balance sheet the shares will come down to 25,000 depreciation on plant is an expense depreciation on plant is an expense but no cash flow because this is a non-cash item and it is a reduction of the value of the plant to that extent similarly depreciation on furniture depreciation on furniture is 2000 and no cash flow but the value of the furniture will reduce to the extent of 2000 and you have received there's a debtor of mr. X you received money from the debtor so it's a receipt from hundred thousand point two zero but it's not an income it is a receipt but not an income because you already shown that as a sales when it was sold but the value of the debtor on the balance sheet value of the debtor on the balance sheet will reduce to that extent we can see that once again you sold goods entire goods sale was on credit and now you're receiving 20,000 so the debtors will reduce to that extent so if you see we have transferred all the transactions whatever given explicitly but because of the accrual concept you cannot ignore the interest because interest is on loan and loan is a contractual obligation you are under obligation to pay the interest so interest is an expense so you are bound to show interest but whether you want to pay or not that depends on your availability of cash let us assume that you pay that 7005 if you interest if interest is not paid we have to create a liability otherwise an expense not paid is a liability so once we have all the items total of incomes minus the total of expense is a profit and if no information is given we assume the profit to be retained or plow back retained profit and the retained profit is 34,500 retained profit is 34,500 and cash in hand the summation of receipts minus the summation of payment is cash in hand and cash in hand is a balance sheet will be shown on the asset side so cash in hand is 82,500 so in the income state or in the balance sheet the retained profit comes from the income statement and the cash in hand comes from the cash flow statement in the process it also demonstrates the interrelationship between the cash flow statement income statement and the balance sheet and the balance sheet so the the process of converting the business transactions into the financial statement is what we want to call accounting so accounting is a process of converting the business decisions into financial statements
Now let us pay attention on the cash flow. We have seen that cash flow will show the cash in hand. And cash in hand is receipts minus payment, but it will be useful, meaningful if the cash in hand is classified on the basis of FD, ID, and OD. So let us see that. Financing decision is a receipts minus payments arising from the financing decisions of the business. So financing decision, you have received capital, you have received loan, that is the financing decisions receipts. And what has been paid under the financing decision? The only payment is the interest. So cash from financing decision is 167,000 positive. Cash from investment decision. So the receipts from investment decision is a dividend here and the amount of dividend is 25,000. You can see that not capital, not loan, sales or sale of and the sale of shares is also from investment so we define assuming that this is not a business of investment so 75,000 is a receipt and the payment here is a purchase of plant purchase of furniture and purchase of shares so purchase of plant during the period is 50,000 Purchase of furniture is 10,000 and purchase of shares is 50,000. So CFI is negative 35,000. Now if you see the, the receipts from operations, we got only money from the debtor because the sales is on credit. So the debtor collection from the debtor is only cash from operation gross. And what are the payments? Purchase of stock, payment of salary, payment of rent. So the amount of stock purchased during the period is 30,000, salary paid 10,000, and the rent paid is 30,000. So CFO is negative 50,000. So if we put these items together, if we put these items together, you get the you'll get the cash from cash in hand so cff cfr cfi okay cfi cfi is and cfo cfo is minus 50 CFF is minus 35 and CFF is plus 167. So if we add them together, you get the cash in hand. So cash in hand can be determined by either showing receipts and payment without classifying the assets, uh, sorry, decisions into FD, ID, and OD, or the cash in hand can also be determined by classifying the receipts and payment into the financing decisions, investment decisions, and operating decision. But from an analyst's point of view, management's point of view, just showing the cash flow statement as all receipts minus payment is not very useful but to make the cash flow statement meaningful and useful is better to classify the cash flows into financing, investment and operating decisions. Thank you very much.